Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And I'm joined here today by... Mark Stevenson, executive director of the USS Kidd Veterans Museum. I had to have you introduce yourself because I keep saying the name wrong. Right. So today we have part one of a video on the corrosion that's been found on USS Kidd and some of the lessons that it can teach the rest of our museum ships, including Battleship New Jersey. And uh, we're talking with Parks about this corrosion because some of it ties back to what you've found in your previous career. Kidd is not the first Fletcher-class destroyer you've seen up close, is she? No, actually, um, I'm, I came to the Kidd because of the USS Johnston, which we dived on in uh, 2021. Uh, I, I actually was introduced to Kidd uh, and studying for that expedition uh, before we went out to look for the wreck so that I would understand what I would be looking for on the bottom of the ocean. That was my first introduction to Kid. I had no idea that I would be here today like this, the guy in charge of this ship. But no, it was it was Johnston that led me to Kid. But it was Titanic that ultimately led me to Johnston. And some of the things that we did at Titanic, I'm finding very useful here today. In, in addition to doing the forensic analysis of the Titanic wreck, where I've had to pull on my naval architectural experience, that's also helped me, you know, understand what we are doing here in the shipyard. Yeah. But um, one thing in particular, we have placed experiments down at the Titanic wreck, a number of experiments that try different things. A lot of it has to do with corrosion. They wanted to understand how different steels, how different metals respond to the corrosive effects of the deep. And folks have gone down to Titanic a number of times since the early 80s? Yeah, uh, well, she was found in 85. 85. So since right. then, we've had a number of things. So we've been looking at the wreck for something like 40 years and seeing. Right. And they place, they place these experiments in one dive and let it sit there for a few years and pick it up on another dive. Like I was picking up experiments late in 2005 on my 2019 dive to Titanic. We, we picked them up so they could go back and go for analysis. And one experiment in particular had a, had a frame which had different types of steel, like it was used in Titanic. Uh -huh. And they had, a, they had a pristine one, they had a painted one, they had a burned one, they had a twisted one, and, and they, they looked to see how they corroded. Okay. And the thing that really got me is that the ones that were burned or twisted, like during the, the sinking, uh -huh. they suffered accelerated corrosion down on the ocean floor. If you look at the Johnston wreck, the Johnston wreck is pristine. There's hardly no corrosion on it so, uh, at all because she is so deep. She's at 6,500 meters. There's no oxygen down there. There's no biological life down there uh, to speak of. And so you don't have the corrosive effects at 6,500 meters like you do at Titanic at 3,800 meters. And she's also where the warm Gulf Stream drops a bunch of stuff into the cold Labrador current. Okay. So there, so the Titanic wreck is very active as a, as a wreck site. And you see a lot, you've seen Titanic wreck covered in rusticles and everything yeah. like that. And parts of it collapsing. Re right. Recently, the railing around the bow. Right. Although there's different reasons for that. And I okay. won't go into it for legal reasons. But um, the um, on the Johnston, the only areas that I saw that were corroded were areas that had burned during the battle. But if they were untouched during battle, oh hell, the paint was just as new as if it was 1944 all over again. Now, is this as simple as it's got a system of coatings protecting it where the fire has burned off that coating and now it's bare steel? Yes, okay. yes, it'd be like that. Or, or the coating's been compromised somehow. Okay. And it's compromised the steel somehow. It started to affect the molecular content of the steel. So, so it's not just the coatings, it's damage to the steel itself underneath. Yes, and that's, that's, the thing, that's the lesson I learned from the Titanic experiments, is the twisted steel. Like, for instance, when Titanic sank, her number two funnel collapsed and fell onto the gymnasium and then fell off. The gymnasium area, that whole area where that funnel hit it, uh -huh. is very severely corroded. In fact, it's already collapsed down a deck compared to the surrounding area. So that's what impact, like in 1912, could do almost a century later. It, it, you know, it accelerates the corrosion and sets it up for accelerated failure. And that's just twisting, that's not fire damage or, or something no, like that? No, that was just some kind of trauma to the steel, some kind of trauma to the steel. The stern, when she went in, 
she was the stern was rotating and then the rudder dug in and it stopped and that stop of the angular momentum put stress on all of those connections within the whole structure decks to to, to frames to shell plate and that's why nowadays the stern is uh -huh. so thoroughly collapsed back there uh, because all of those connected parts had accelerate corrosion fail if they didn't fail outright when that momentum stopped and she tweaked and Titanic stern keel is tweaked about seven degrees because of that oh wow if they didn't fail outright then then they were stressed to the point where they corroded faster and then failed so how do I apply this a kid yeah so a few years ago we noticed rust just blossoming from inside the ship through the letters DD and kid and it just it, it just had a, a swath that came out of the steel and took out the letters as well and when we looked at that um, we um, we found that it, back in 1982 when they were maneuvering kid in position a tugboat hit her pretty kind of hit her pretty hard there uh -huh. it did a little bit of indentation but what's more important is what you couldn't see. It applied a sudden force to that steel that just very, very minutely affected the molecular structure of that steel. And just the, the I, I don't know, I, I don't fully understand it. I'd have to get, um, you know, a metallurgist to come here and explain it in detail. But just the shifting of those molecules a bit sets it up for corrosion. And that rust bloom finally came through. So we said, can you fix that transom, and, and and we could see it coming through once we cleaned it up a bit in uh -huh. Baton Rouge. Yeah. We could see it went all the way through into the electrical shop inside, but it still looked fairly localized. We brought it here to the dry dock, uh -huh. and they started working on it, and they ended up having to replace the entire width of the transom back there. I can see that. So, so that's something like 30 feet of... Uh... Weld work, it's, that's what, like three feet tall and 30 feet long? Something like that, but that's um, that, that's an indicator you have to look for. You, um, it's it, it, it's uh, where, wherever the ship might have suffered damage uh, or been repaired. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got, we've got some areas up front that are concerned because of previous repair on Kid, when she got hit by the Kamikaze, or when she got colli when she collided with a, with a freighter. Uh, so that was gonna be my next question, New Jersey, doesn't really take any significant damage during her career, but Kid does have that first hand experience with kamikaze damage. You're finding similar yeah, I mean, uh, corrosion in those areas? Well, I'm fine. Those are, those are areas we have to pay close, close attention to. I'm not saying it's a guarantee that you will have a mm -hmm. rust bloom there. Because they do crop out and repair it when she's in the yard. Yeah, but that that in itself is trauma to the steel. So it's just it's just something to watch for. If they do it right, it's probably not a problem. If they didn't do it quite right, because remember, some of these repairs were done in wartime, and they were done. Some repairs were done not in a in a dry dock or a shipyard. Some were done in advanced bases, like out in the Pacific or somewhere. If they weren't done properly, if the metal wasn't prepared properly, they could set up corrosion that could be a problem down the road. Now they didn't care then. Mm -hmm. They got to get the ship back onto the front line, and she wasn't supposed to last past the war anyway. 80 years later, we're <laughs> dealing with this. So it's just something to watch for. Know the history of your ship. Know what damage she took, accidental or wartime damage, and keep an eye on those areas. They could become problem spots. In our case, we were lucky. This, this, this rust bloom manifested itself not long before our overhaul period. And it made for some ugly pictures by tourists to see that rust cutting through the name but um, we, we did a quick Bondo patch of it, painted it up to do that, and then we brought it here, and there, now it's fixed right. That's one of the few examples I can think of in museum ships where the Band-Aid repair is actually just a Band-Aid until you do the real thing very soon after, and it's not a Band-Aid that you leave on for 20 years. No, 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 no. <laughs> it, it was strictly Bondo. We, <laughs> it wasn't gonna hold anything. It just no, looked no. good for a while. There are parts of the ships I've worked on that are just Bondo, but they've been like that for a decade. Well, we found out in some of the painting here, we found out that some previous... Now, I love volunteers. I wish we had more. Volunteers are well-meaning, but you gotta watch them too, because we found places where somebody tasked to paint something like like one of our whale boat uh -huh. uh, davits. Yeah. 
you know, it's um, it's got like an I beam with reinforced beams in the middle, and then it's very thin in spots. One area had evidently rusted all the way through. The guy put duct tape on it, and painted over it. We never knew until we took the paint off and found the duct tape. And it's continuing to corrode inside under the yeah, paint. Yeah, we're going, oh shit, this is the this is a whaleboat davit. This is a structural thing. You know, <laughs> yeah. But again, I have no slight on volunteers, but sometimes you'll get a couple of bad ones. Now, having told you all this, I do not mean to insinuate that we suffered corrosion on the rudder. That's a whole nother story altogether. Termites, right? Yes. Yeah. Got to watch out for termites aboard your ships. Parks, thank you for your unique expertise on that. That's something I had never heard of before. Uh, and, and it certainly makes sense. This is part one of a two part video on the corrosion that's been found on USS Kidd and uh, some thoughts about it that we haven't found in other museum ships or we haven't realized that we found it. So make sure you come over to USS Kidd's channel and check out part two. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, but USS Kidd does not. There's a link in the description below where you can donate to their ongoing restoration efforts. There's also a link down there to their website. Check out the hours of their museum back in Baton Rouge, which is still open now during this dry docking project. So you can still go out there and uh, see the exhibits. You can support Battleship New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and our channel. Thanks for watching. Whoop.